From all you moonshiners, if you want to hear About the kind of bulls that they serve around here Made a way back in top of them Hey, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Uh, today we're going to do something that we've done in the past, but you know, some people have missed that. We're just going to do it again anyway. So if you've already seen this, uh, you know, you can skip it or you can follow on through. It's only a couple of minutes, but we're going to, we're going to do our cut. Um, and this is the cut that we do with our final finished product. And this right now, I've gotten my cylinder with my alcoholometer and it says, oh, uh, it says about 152. But then if I look at my conversion factor, and I've got my sheet over there, it's about 70 degrees in here so I add six to that so I'm right at almost about 160 proof but I'm not really that concerned right now with that except as a starting point that's my data point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these two jugs at some point in time together with some distilled water because I want to bring this down to a drinkable level uh, and the commercial level is 80 proof is that right? yeah that's 80 proof yeah 40 percent alcohol I got a couple of uh, funnels I've got some wood chips I've got my barrel and I'm about ready to go. Now, before you ask the question, is there a formula for this? Well, absolutely. Just go to homedistillers.org. They've got every formula known to man. And you could actually take the proof of this, the amount, measure that, and you could figure out how much distilled water it's going to take to get you to where. But why take all the fun out of it? Let's just do it by hand because it's just so much, that, it's just that much, it, it, it's just easy. So, we're going to add some distilled water. Now you'll notice that once you add a lot of distilled water and then you add your spirits, um, you may get some air bubbles in there. Don't let that bother you. Uh, they'll soon go away. Now, see, I can still I can see a few air bubbles in there now. And then when you pour the spirit in, you'll see it start to mix and it looks like a, uh, I don't know, almost like a little oily mixture or so, but it'll mix up. Now, and you see, I just did that by sight. I just, it gives me something to play with. Now, if you look here, you'll see that that's pretty dingy or cloudy. What that is, that's a lot of air bubbles that are being separated now and that are, 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 are separating from its molecules and it's starting to release. And in just a couple of seconds here, that'll turn crystal clear. And while we're here, I might as well pour this back in there because all I want to do is bring that down to 80 proof from it's almost 160 proof. So if you think about that, that should wind up with about a gallon, almost a gallon and a half here. All right. What I want to do is I'm going to turn it over with my hand on it just to mix it up real good. Let that set for a second. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put it back in the cylinder. We'll drop our alcoholometer in there and we'll find out where we're at. Um, don't worry if you get a little bit too strong or a little bit too weak. You've got plenty of time to play with it. My goodness. Uh, when we did it the first one, um, it came out at just about 80 proof, which I was almost just about right on it. So what I did was I just poured another equal amount of water and an equal amount of my spirit into this jar and brought it up to a little over three quarters of a gallon. I'm going to allow these air bubbles to dissipate again and then we're going to test it one more time. Uh, just be cautious, if you put this inside your cylinder with all these air bubbles, you're still going to have to wait for them to dissipate out of your cylinder because you'll get an off reading if you've got air bubbles in there. So you just, you just want to make sure all those air bubbles are gone first. Uh, this is relatively a simple process. And then what I'll do with this afterwards, oh yeah, what I'm going to do afterwards is uh, right before I put it into my barrel, I'm going to try to short change a little bit of the maturation time. And I've got these medium oak chips. Uh, right now I've got about three, three and a half, almost four ounces. It only takes about two ounces for a gallon. Uh, so what I'll do is once I get this exactly the way I want it, I'm going to introduce these oak chips and let it sit for about two days. Uh, two days will give me a really nice color and give me the beginning of that, that mellow flavor that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to put it in the barrel and let the barrel do the rest of the work. Uh, I could just pour this into the barrel and expect the barrel to do everything, and it, it would take several weeks. Uh, in this case, this is a 10 liter, so it's going to take probably about six to eight weeks. But I can shorten that just a little bit um, just by oak chipping it first and give it a little bit more of a robust uh, wood flavor or an oaky flavor and a smoothness and let it pull the vanillins out of the, out of the barrel uh, while it sits in there. So now it's time to test this. And I'll tell you, uh, we're setting that. Remember, we're going to add, because it's only 75 degrees in here, according to our chart, we'll add six 
proof to it. And we're sitting right at exactly 38. So I'm a little about four proof over. Um, my goodness, that's almost close enough. Uh, I'm happy with that. I'll, all I'm going to do now is uh, add some water to this one, bring this one up to the same level, and then we'll have probably about a gallon and a half. But I'm not going to boil. Well, now we're still working on our second jug. Uh, we've, we've already tested it. It was 110. I added a little bit more water, but what I was doing is I was adding these chips to it right now. And uh, this, once I do this, I'll just close the lid off and put it on the back shelf and let it sit. And oh heck, maybe every, whoops, every couple hours I might go back there and give it a shake. It's not going to hurt it. I mean, you walk by it and you just can't help it. You just want to, for some reason, you just want to give it a shake. Uh, that's not going to hurt it one bit. So do that if you feel it's, if it makes you happy, you know, go ahead and do that. So let's test this one real quick. And then we're going to find out what the alcohol content of this one is before we add the oak chips to it. Huh, yeah, same rule. Remember, it's like 75 degrees in here, so we're going to add six to it. And you can find these on, on the internet. Just, just look up correction factor for alcoholometer. Um, and look at there. We're just about exactly where we're at, uh, about 38. And I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to mess with it. Now, remember, if you're going to go straight into the barrel, uh, I'm bringing mine down to about 80 proof drink. It. Look, it never lasts in my barrel long. For some reason, people just love to, to taste it and you know sample it. So it really doesn't last that long. But if you're going to leave it in there for a long time, a lot of commercial distillers will put it in at 115 to 125 with the anticipation that through evaporation, they'll lose a little bit of that alcohol. And that's perfectly all right. So a lot of people will do that. They'll put it in what I would call pretty hot or warm. Um, and that's only in spikeness. Um, but I'll put mine in at 80, 85 ish, somewhere around that neighborhood. Um, haven't had a complaint yet for a free drink, so uh, we'll wait and see. Hey, thanks for all you do. Um, we wish you well in your, in your brewing pleasure. And if you need something, please give us a call. If you've got a question, if you just want to call and brag a little bit or you want to share some insight, uh, we will share all the information we possibly can with anybody and everybody. Um, most of you already know that we're accessible. We'll answer email. We'll answer your YouTube con comments. Uh, we answer the phone calls as soon as we possibly can, or I'll try to call you right back. Usually, if I don't answer, it's because I'm on the line with somebody else. Uh, look, have a good day and happy distilling.